Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people. Teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. How you doing, sis? What's your name? Alima. Alima, I'm, I'm Officer Khalil. It's good to see you. So right now we're out here teaching the history and the heritage for the so-called African Americans and Hispanics. So when you look at the sign, where do you see your nationality listed? Well, I'm African, so it's definitely not there. You you are African? So you were born what country in Africa were you born in? Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone, okay. So can you tell me a little bit about what that word Sierra Leone means? Yeah, the word itself. Okay, it's a Portuguese word. Okay, uh-huh. And it means Lion Mountain. It means Lion Mountain. Okay, so let me ask you, tell me your name one more time. Alima, why do the people in Sierra Leone have a name of the Portuguese? Because they colonized them. Because they colonized you, exactly right. So let's find out a little bit of prophecy that pertains to the people on the west coast of Africa. That's the same for us here on this side. Okay, give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 48, 47. Verse 47. So the same is true for us here as it is for y'all over there. The same thing that happened to us happened to you, okay? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So right now Moses is talking to the children of Israel, which is our forefathers, saying if you don't, because you don't serve God for everything, read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So now in Sierra Leone, who are the people of Sierra Leone in service to? Read. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Which who? Which the Lord shall send against thee. God sent those nations to colonize that side of Africa for their disobedience. Read. In hunger. So now if the people of Sierra Leone or the so-called African American on this side, if we want food, who, who we got to go to for? Read on. And in thirst, what about your water in Sierra Leone? Is, do you control it? Yeah, you got to go to somebody else for your water now, right? Read on. And in nakedness, what about your clothing? What about you, bro? Who, who'd you get your clothes from? Who controls the material that's made your clothes? Not you. We're going over curses that pertain to the children of Israel. So even though she's from Sierra Leone, you more than likely from the tribe of Judah, and I didn't get your nationalities. Even though you are the so-called Mexican, you three are the same race of people who have been divided and conquered by your enemies. So what we're reading now happens to all three of y'all, all four of y'all. Read. And in want of all things. So if the so-called African-American, the Sierra Leone, or the Mexican, if they want anything, who must they go to for it? You must go to the people who colonized you. You must go to Massa for your food, for your water, for anything you ever wanted in your life. You did not go to somebody who looks like you for it. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron. Wait, he shall what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed. Get that sign from your shoulder. It said he's going to put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So did the so-called African Americans at one point have yokes of iron upon their neck? Bro, I'm asking you, bro. Did that happen to your people? What about you, sis? Did the people of Sierra Leone have yokes of iron? Up? What about the so-called Mexicans, the Aztecs? They still got the yoke of iron upon their neck because we, we are still, as a race of people, we are still in bondage. We are still subservient to another race of people who told us that our king looked like this. They told us and they conquered us and they told us that the king of the Jews was a white man, that the real Jews were white people and they stole our land. When in actuality, the real Jews are us. That's right. Read on. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. 
The Lord thy God shall bring a nation. The Lord thy God shall bring a nation against thee from far. So right now, God's saying he's going to bring a nation against us from far. When the, when the conquistadors came, did they come from far? No, they, where did they come from? They came from, what language do you speak? Where did the conquistadors come from? So did a nation come against them from far? What about when they came to colonize Sierra Leone? Did a nation come from, what about when they came and picked you up from the west coast of Africa and brought you here by chain? Did a nation come from far? So we're gonna read more about this nation that would come from far against the 12 tribes. Read. From the end of the earth, all the way in Europe, from the end of the earth. As swift as the eagle fly. As swift as what? As swift as the eagle fly. What nations on the earth are represented by an eagle? America. The America, what about the Portuguese? What about the Spanish? What about the English? What about the Germans? What about the Romans? What about the Greeks? The so-called white man has always given themselves the symbol of the eagle. Read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Bro, we speak in English right now. Are we from England? Why the hell we speak English? Why? Hablas Espanol? Por que hablas Espanol? Are you from Spain? Why the hell you speak Spanish? We, a nation of fierce countenance. A nation of fierce countenance. When that nation showed up, were they friendly to us? Are they friendly to us now? We, which shall not regard the person of the old. They're not going to have any regard for the old. The average lifespan of a so-called African-American black man, Hispanic man, is 65. The old men don't live that long. Read. Nor show favor to the young. Nor show favor to the young. When we were young, during slavery times, they used to feed our children to, to alligators, right. gator bait. Right. When you were old enough to walk, you were in the field picking cotton. Right. Right. Read on. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. So that the, the cattle that used to walk, that used to roam this land, what happened to them? Read what happened down. to the cattle that the Native Americans and the Aztecs used to thrive on? Right. Where is it at? Read that part again. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle. Because the nation in the form of an eagle ate it all. They killed off the buffalo that was the tribe of Gad's, uh, where's the tribe of Gad at? The tribe of Gad's food source. They killed off all the buffalo. Read. And the fruit of thy land. Verse 68. So right now we're reading curses that happened to the children of Israel. So if all these things happen to the so-called blacks and Hispanics, what does that make us according to the Bible? That makes us God's chosen seed. That's we are the Israelites, but we've right. lost our heritage. We've lost our history on purpose. They know exactly who we are. And when they tell us that Christ is a white man, when they tell us that God loves everybody, when they tell us that the Bible's for everybody, they're lying. Right. They lie to you. They're Give me right. that in Deuteronomy 68. No. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God's saying he's going to bring our people into slavery by way of ship. So bro, how did our people get to this side of the world? By what kind of ship? Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God's going to send the people into slavery by way of ship. That happened to the people who are on the west coast of Africa, your brother right here. That also happened to the so-called Mexican the, the Hispanics, many of your ancestors were sold into slavery by way of ship in Seville, Spain. Right. One of the biggest That's slave right. ports in Europe. Right. Read on. That's right. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So since we've been here, or since we've been in Africa, or since we've been in the land of Mexico, have we been back to our original homeland? No, we haven't. Our real homeland is Jerusalem. That's, right. That's why when you hear that song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, Come Up For To Carry Me Home, your homeland is Jerusalem. Right. But now we don't know that. Now we think that we're African. Now we think that we're African American. Now we think we're Mexican. Mexican just means center of the moon. Right. There is no land called Mexico. That's the title of the so-called white man. Read. Right. And there ye shall be sold. So we're talking about a people who will go into slavery on ships, have yokes of iron on their neck, an eagle would come against them, and you would be sold for what? Unto your enemy. Oh, I thought the white man was our friends. And there you shall be sold unto your enemy. The Bible calls them our enemy. That's right. Who bought us off ships? Since we got off the ships, have they been kind to us? Have they shown us any sort of grace? Any sort of evidence that we are we are allies? So why are we following behind them? Celebrating a holiday that's made up for the sake of our fake liberation when we're not even free. 
Are we free as a race of people? Hell no. How can you be free when the money does not even have your face on it? You got Abraham Lincoln on your five dollar bill. That's some. That's madness. Give me Baruch three. Uh, Thirty. What's that? Baruch three and eight. Give me Baruch three and eight. Sis, how you doing, sis? Right now we're going over history and prophecy that pertain to our race. So when you look at this sign, where do you see yourself? The tribe of Judah. That's the so-called African American's biblical forefather. And like we were going over earlier, the Christ, you know who Jesus Christ is, right? Jesus Christ, he comes from the tribe of Judah. But when we get taught about Christ, they tell us that he looks like this, right? But is this an accurate depiction of Christ? Which, so which one's more accurate? That one. So if Christ is from the tribe of Judah and he's black, what color does that make the Jews? That makes the Jews so-called black, but when we think of the Jews, what do we think of? Why? What happened? Okay, we're gonna come back to that in a second, but I want to read this first. Okay. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Hey, uh, sister, sister from Sierra Leone. What's your name again? Alima, I'm sorry. And your name? Yesi, and your name? Brooke, and your name, bro? Jonah, and sis, your name? Marie. Marie, okay. Read that. The book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So the Bible says that we are yet this day in our captivity. You're shaking your head. Yeah, we are in captivity. Right? Read on. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach. Understand that when it says being scattered for a reproach, we got brought into slavery and got brought here to get it right. We are in captivity because we have not gotten it right yet. We are still a nation who God gave the laws to. And we do not keep the laws now, do we? We say we love God in our hearts, but do we obey God, uh, Marie? We don't, right? So we got it. Not 100%. So let me show you the result when the children of Israel keep the commandments. When they do what God told them to, first, to do in the first place, they wouldn't be at the, Give me Judith 5 real quick. Judith 5 verse 20. You got to understand the efforts that have been gone, that have been put into keeping us asleep as a race. Right. They know exactly who we are. Right. But when we obey our God, the God of Abraham, we rule over the earth. Right. You are fit to rule the earth. That's you are a king. That's right. right. The book of Judith, chapter 5, verse 20. Listen yeah. close. This is a conversation between a Chinese governor and an African king, and they're talking about us. Okay, it's a, it's a conversation in third person. You got to listen close. Now, therefore, my lord and governor. So he's telling that Chinese man, therefore, my lord and governor, he's warning him. If there be any error in this people, if there's any margin of error in this people, if there's any margin of error in the 12 tribes, read. And they sin against their God, it says, and they sin against their God because they know that the God of Abraham is our God. Read. That's right. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. They know that if we're in sin, our communities, our, our neighborhoods will be in ruin. So when you, where are you from? So when, is your neighborhood in ruin? Yeah. What about your neighborhood? Is it in ruin? What about the neighborhood where your people live? Is it in ruin? What about where your people live? Is it in ruin? It says the land of these people will be in ruin if we can keep them in sin. That's right. If we can keep them away from their heritage of knowing who they are, we can rule over them without them knowing anything about who they are. That's, right. That's why your church is nothing but a song and a damn dance. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. And we shall overcome them. Us, we're looking at the results of the children of Israel being in sin. Another race has overcome you. And now we don't have any idea as to why. And we march alongside them like they're our friends when they have no intent. When's the last time a white man ever did anything to help us? Read. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, so this is the flip side to it. If there's no iniquity, meaning no sin in our nation, and how you doing, bro? Right now we're going over the sins of our nation. You should listen close. Read. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, if there's no iniquity in our nation, if the people of Israel are no longer in the midst of sin, let my Lord now pass. He's sworn, he says, don't mess with them. That's if right. they're in sin, don't deal with them. Right. Read. Oh, excuse me, if they're not in sin, don't mess with them. But uh, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them. Because they know that when we are not in sin, God will defend the 12 tribes. That's but right. he always has. That's he liberated right. us out of Egypt. He liberated, out of, he liberated us out of Babylon. He liberated us out of Assyria. He liberated us from the Romans, the Greeks. All throughout the history of the Bible, we've messed up and we've gotten back with God, gotten back right with God. Now it's time for us to get right with our God. 
Read. And their God be for them. And the God of Abraham will actually be for his people. That's Read. Right. And we become a reproach before all the world. And they will become a reproach before all the world. That's the 12 tribes of Israel ruling. That's the real kingdom of heaven. That's right. So because we are in sin, this is why we are on the bottom. Right. So now we must show our people our sins. That's Give me Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Right. We must, we have to, we are right. obligated to come and restore the decay of a state of our nation. Right. Because we continue in sin, not knowing the effect of what it has. Yeah. What happens to us when we sin? We are on the bottom simply because we don't obey our laws. Read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Y'all don't be offended, but you're not offended by the Bible at all, are you? Oh, not at all. Read that. The woman, the who? The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. What's that mean? Say it again. Exactly. Pens are not ordained for women to wear. We might be told that's okay now, but we follow after the so-called white people who go through the who went through the feminist movement, Amelia Bloomer, who led the feminist movement, who said it was okay for women to wear pants. Right. When God says different, God says, read that again. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So, a woman cannot wear man's clothing. Read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So, just like y'all not supposed to be wearing pants. Would you all take us seriously as men of God if we had on dresses up here teaching the Bible? You smile, you laugh, but you know it's true. You know for damn sure you wouldn't. You would not look at us as serious men of the Lord if we had on strange apparel. Because we know in our heart of hearts that there's punishment for that. Even that in Zephaniah. There's punishment for us not being in order. There's punishment for us dressing like the other sex. You understand, bro? You got a wife? Girlfriend? You don't deal with no female at all. You got daughters. Okay, so this is something that you got to start to teach your daughters. You gotta start to command your household like the king you are to start to set your nation back in order. You got a huge responsibility being from the tribe of Judah. It's not just knowing, but it's applying. It's applying the laws and uniting with your people. You believe in the unity of your people, yes? You believe in the unity of your people? You all believe in the unity of y'all people? How do we do it? How do we unify? Because we've been saying that for years. We've been saying that for centuries. We gotta come together, bro. We gotta do this. We gotta come. How? How the hell do we come together as a people? Right. Give me that in uh, Psalms 133. Yes, I'm holding How do we come together as a race? I don't want y'all to get distracted. Don't go nowhere. The book of Psalms, chapter 133, verse 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Read that again. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. So we cannot be afraid to keep the laws of God to dwell together in unity. There's nothing else on the earth that can unify the 12 tribes other than the laws of God which was given to the 12 tribes. We have to come back together to the, to the, to the laws of God or suffer punishment. So going back to the commandment about clothes, this is the judgment for men dressing like women and women dressing like men. There's punishment when God judges the earth for that. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 1, verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice. So the day of the Lord's sacrifice, uh, Naima, right? Alima, I'm sorry, Alima. The day of the Lord's sacrifice is talking about the return of Christ. Right? The day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish, I will reward, punish the princes. He's going to punish the princes, read, and the king's children. The king's children is y'all. Y'all are the king's children. He's going to punish y'all for what? And all such as are clothed. As are what? Clothed. All such as are clothed. Meaning have on the apparel of with strange apparel. It's strange to see, for God to look down and see his daughters dressed like men. We know it's strange for God to look down and see his sons dressed like girls. Just like there's rules for us, there's rules for y'all. That's right. Give me uh, Ezekiel 16.10. Bring it out. Let me ask y'all a question. Would you wear pants to your own wedding? What about you? Would you wear pants to your own wedding? Maybe. Maybe. What about you? Would you wear pants? You say no. So let me ask. Why not? Because why? You want to look feminine on your wedding. What about you? Why would you not wear pants to your own wedding? Because it's not what sis? It's not proper. So are there exceptions to that rule? Should our women be having on pants at all? No. No. Read that. Read Deuteronomy 22 5 again. Absolutely not. Women cannot wear pants because there's judgment for that. 
you know, the, you, you got the attire of a man on. And when you dress like a man, it makes you act like a man. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Go back to Ezekiel. I want you to hear this. Before you leave, hear this. Before you leave, hear this. Go back to Ezekiel. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 10. This is for y'all. This is how God wants his women to dress. Not in pants, not in short shorts. We can see all your curves. Read. I clothed thee also with broidered work. So God is giving you an attire on how you're supposed to dress. It says he clothed you with broidered works, with handmade material. Read. And shod thee with badger skin. Badger skin. When y'all look at the movies, with the, with the old school movies with the white woman, she got the fox fur on. She got that from you. Read. And I girded thee about with fine linen. The finest linens on the earth are meant for our people. The finest, the finest kinds, the finest silks, they're meant to cover your skin. And I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments. And I put a bracelet upon thy hand. So our people love wearing jewelry. And this is God prophesying about how we're supposed to really dress. We, our women are supposed to be decked out with the finest things. When you look at a woman who got her breasts out, her booty hanging out, versus a woman who's dressed modest with jewelry and a long dress on, do you look at them differently? Absolutely, right? What do you think about the woman dressed immodest? What do you think about her? She gives you something to respect. She gives you something to respect versus, what's the opposite? You think with what? Bring it out. And what's the result of that in our community? Teach up. What's the result of that in our communities? Baby mamas, baby daddies, right. unwanted pregnancies, right. HIV AIDS, right. gonorrhea, chlamydia, all because our men think with the right. It's time to start thinking That's through right. the words of God and stop thinking with your penis. Teach Read that up. again. I deck thee also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. And I put a jewel on thy forehead. When you think of when you think about people who have jewels on their forehead, what comes to mind? What people wear jewels on their forehead? Indian. The Indian. But Bring it out. Who do you think they took that from? Right. They took that from right. you. Right. Everything that's done in the world is copied from the twelve tribes yes. of Israel. Right. They give us the scraps and they take the meat. They give us the garbage and they take they take the the, the, the best parts of the earth. Right. They take all the knowledge, all the information, all the things that are meant to uphold the nation, they take it from you and give you white Jesus. They take it from you and give you white Jesus. Give me Psalms 147 verse 19. The whole Bible's written to you, bro, whether you like it or not. The whole Bible's written to the so-called blacks and Hispanics. But now we don't we don't believe that. We don't want to hear that. We want to think we're all equal, we all buddies, we all one. That's a lie. That's a lie. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. The, the, the sons of Jacob are the so-called blacks and Hispanics. The sons of Jacob are you, and you, and you. The sons of Jacob. He showeth his word, the Bible, to Jacob. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. The statutes and the judgments, meaning the laws and the penalties for breaking the laws, they belong to the 12 tribes and nobody else. He hath not dealt so with any nation. Read that again. He hath not dealt so with any nation. So no other nation has the laws of God but you. For they will turn away thy son from following me, Read. that they may serve other gods. That they may what? That they may serve other gods. That they may what? That they may serve other gods. That they may what? That they may serve other gods. That's the reason why God said that we should not make marriages with the other nations, because here's the reason why. Scream black power while Heron was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.